Hello and welcome to our OpenLCA tutorial. In this video, we will show you how you can create processes, flows, product systems, and how to assess the environmental impact of a product in OpenLCA. This video will be created in two parts. First, we start OpenLCA. We open AgriBelize database, which we have downloaded for free in the previous videos. In our example of LCA, we will create a process which explains how to cook 1 kg of chicken pasta and we will assess the environmental impact emanating from its life cycle. To do this, we go to the navigation tab and we create our first process. We right click on processes, then we click on new process. We give a name to our process, for example, chicken pasta. Then we select create a new flow for the process which means the reference output of this process. We give it a name as chicken pasta because our final product is chicken pasta. For this flow property, we are going to keep it as mass. Then we click on finish. The general information tab opens. We have already the name. We can add a description. For example, we type this process explains the production of one kilogram of chicken pasta. The used ingredients are taken from the Mediterranean Cookbook X. We can keep the date as it is. We can select the location as Europe, for example. You can add in technology by choice. And in this case, we will not use a data quality system. We go down the page and click on Input and Outputs. In the Inputs section, I will add our inputs which are the needed ingredients to cook the pasta. Double click in the tab and I search for olive oil. We can select olive oil extra version from the list. In the same way I search for chicken breast without skin. In our case I know that this flow exists and it's written in this way. When you don't know you can look it up following this method. We use the search bar on the top right corner of the screen and type tomato and select search in flows. As you can see, there is a lot of tomato flows. To filter it more, we use the search filter option by writing double concentrated. Then we can select the first one. To add this flow, there are two ways. First, we can simply copy the name, then back to the process inputs. Double click, then paste the name in the filter section, then we select it and click on OK. Or we follow the category of the flow, which shows the pathway of its placement under these categories. We track the flow by going to processes on the left, then click on agricultural, then food, distribution, Fruits, vegetables, legumes and nuts. Vegetables. Vegetables cooked. And then we select our flow. We open the process tab again. Then we slide the flow directly to the input list. I'm going to add a pasta flow in the same way. For this, I'll select dried pasta gluten free. Also, I add fresh water from resources. In addition, some white salt. And finally, let's create a new flow which does not exist in the database and call it Mediterranean Spices. To create it, we go to the navigation tab and right click on flow, then new flow. I give it a name as Mediterranean Spices. I'm going to skip the description. In the flow type, we have three types. The first one is elementary flow, and it holds a tree leaf in its symbol. It means a material or energy that enters the process directly from the environment, without previous human transformation, or it leaves the process to be released into the environment, which is not our case. The second is a product flow and it holds three gear wheels in its symbol. It means a good, 
a service, a processed material, and this is the case of the herbs which we buy from the store. And the last one is a waste flow with a broomstick symbol. It means a substance or an object which the holder intends to dispose it of. And certainly this is not the case of our flow. So we select product and the appropriate flow property and click on finish. Our new flow will be added to the end of the list. We click on it, then drag it to the inputs list. Next, we go to the output list and we add wastewater which was emitted from our cooking process. Now, we will add the amounts and the units of the flow. 10 grams of oil, 400 grams of chicken, 50 grams of tomato, 300 grams of pasta, 2 grams of salt, and 10 grams of spices. In this example, we want to set the boundary system from cradle to gate, which means every input and output we used has to be connected to its whole supply chain in the upstream. To do so, we will link every input in our list to a provider, which means we will assign a supply chain to them. In the provider section, we select the suggested processes to every flow. Before moving to the next step, I would like to grab your attention to several details. In the amount section, we can add not only numbers, but we can also add formulas. For example, instead of 400 grams of chicken, we can change it to 400 divided by 1000 and change the unit to kilograms. We can also use parameters instead of writing the amounts directly. We go down the page and click on parameters. Double click in the input parameter section. We add a name, for example, olive oil, and give it a value as 10. We can write in the description unit equal to gram so that we don't forget. We go back to the input output tab, we delete the value of olive oil in the amount, then type olive oil. Finally, since we will not use any allocation, we go to the general information tab to migrate our process into a product system to obtain the whole life cycle of the product. We click on create product system. We select chicken pasta as a reference process. We keep auto link processes checked to have all the upstream processes linked to our reference process. Select prefer default providers so that the flows get automatically linked to their fitting providers and click on unit process to see all the contributing processes separately and in a simple way. We can always edit the name and the description of the product system. We go down the page and we click on model graph. In this step, we can always build the supply chain in case we miss it in the beginning. We right click on the chicken pasta process. We select build supply chain, then complete, then prefer default providers. You can also link your process inputs manually by a right click on the process. Select search for providers, then select the flow and look for a provider. In this case, it's already linked. We can also search for a recipient for an output by selecting the flow. When a process shows a positive sign, it means it still has linked processes to it and by clicking on it, we can see the upstream stage and the whole boundary system. To have an idea about the number of the upstream processes and how many links exist, we can click down the page on statistics. To go in deep details about what we have been talking, you can always check our manual which will be attached in the comments section. 
After creating the product system, the next step is to assess the environmental impact emanating from these processes. To do so, we have to go to the General Information tab, then click on Calculate. But before that, we need to import impact assessment methods into our database. And we should do this with every imported new database. We will continue the next steps in the next video.